and welcome back to another episode of my energy series. I'm Linnea Lucan, research fellow with the Heartland Institute's Arthur B. Robinson Center on Climate and Environmental Policy. In this episode, I'm going to discuss an energy source that gets brought up a lot in our comments sections and in our live chats. It's one of the least utilized energy sources in America, making up only 0.4% of our utility scale electricity though we do generate the greatest amount of electricity from it of any country. Other countries like Iceland have made greater use of it, powering a quarter of their electricity production. It has no significant emissions, poses limited threat to the environment when handled correctly, and is not dependent on the weather like other renewables. So why isn't geothermal energy more widely used? Let's get into it. Before I get into the details here, I'm going to caution you guys right off the bat and before the comments pop up talking about this. I am not talking about heat pumps. I am talking about electricity generation at the utility scale. Yes, geothermal energy can be used to generate not just electricity, it can also be used more directly in the heating and cooling of uh, homes and businesses. Places like Idaho run lines with geothermally produced hot water to keep snow off the sidewalks, for example, and about 90% of homes in Iceland are heated with direct-use geothermal. When people say geothermal energy, usually what's being described is the heat energy generated by the, by the Earth, either through the leftover heat from the planet's formation or constant ongoing radioactive decay deep underground. The mantle of the Earth is made of molten rock which heats the rock layers of the crust. The natural heat of the earth is most easily utilized when it comes closer to the surface though. This is in the form of a lava pit, hot springs, geysers, subsurface hot water or steam reservoirs, or even just plain old dry hot rock. The kinds of conditions that are good for geothermal reservoirs that we can actually make use of are usually around tectonic plate boundary regions like in the Western United States and also in hotspot volcanic regions like Hawaii and Iceland. So, how does it work? Well, similar to other electricity generation methods, we're going to use it to turn a turbine. What else? With geothermal heat, we can generate steam or use pre-existing hot water from the ground. How we access that geothermal reservoir, or the hot zone underground, is very similar to how we drill for oil and gas, actually. You're looking for the right underground conditions. Porosity, which allows fluids like water or steam in this case to be captured in the rock grain spaces, and permeability, which means that there are pathways between those pores that allow the fluid to move. You must also obviously have the necessary temperature for a geothermal reservoir. You drill down to the reservoir that satisfies those criteria, laying down pipe as you drill that will conduct the water or the steam or sometimes other fluids, depending on the temperature, and then the fluid is piped to the surface. It turns a turbine and it generates electricity. Interestingly, if you do have a really good spot for a geothermal well, but it doesn't have good enough permeability, the geothermal company can frack the formation in a way that's very similar to how you frack shale for natural gas, which improves the permeability artificially. If there's no fluid present naturally, in the reservoir, then we can pump our own water into the formation where it's heated and returns to the surface as either hot water or steam. In the United States, California is by far the largest producer of electricity from geothermal. On this chart are the top seven states for geothermal electricity production. All of them are in the West. The upfront cost is pretty expensive compared to other renewables, but geothermal operates at a very high efficiency and the operating costs are quite low. After all is said and done, the Energy Information Administration reports that the levelized cost of electricity generated by geothermal is similar to that of onshore wind, or a new updated natural gas plant. It sounds pretty great, and it can be in the right conditions. It's an energy source that doesn't produce any significant emissions, but bringing water up from deep underground can carry along with it some pretty nasty stuff. In terms of gases, you can get the regular old carbon dioxide, methane, and also H2S. As anyone who has worked in the oil field knows, hydrogen sulfide gas can be really dangerous. It's poisonous, flammable, bad for the local environment, and it can be fatal in the right concentrations. 
This is a hazard that any operation involving drilling into the ground will have, but most of these gases can be kept in check in a closed system with scrubbers for any emitted H2S. Without reinjection of the water produced, there can also be heavy metals and other toxic elements that can come up to the surface and contaminate soil or water. These will be things like arsenic, boron, mercury, but it can be mitigated. Really though, the biggest hurdles for geothermal development are the availability of a good site for the well, and picking a location with water that isn't overly contaminated with minerals that can crystallize or precipitate out of the water and corrode or clog up machinery and pipelines. Siting is difficult because a lot of these prime locations for geothermal are also in some of the least populated parts of the country. For electricity generation, transmission lines need to be built, so you want your electricity source to be as close to the area the power is needed as possible. These issues limit the location prospects, along with the fact that, like producing oil, this isn't actually an infinite resource. A lot of people don't think about this, but an isolated geothermal reservoir will eventually run out of usable heat energy as you are harvesting it, making it necessary to redrill new wells. Finally, there is some concern that withdrawing water and reinjecting it causes small tremors near the well site, especially since the best locations for geothermal are geologically active areas already. In the end, geothermal is an expensive, location-specific power source that can be useful and efficient for the locations that it works best in. It's already utilized to a great degree in places like Iceland, both for electricity generation and home heating. It seems to show some promise, though, as I said, location, location, location. It matters big time for this case. As always, these videos are based on longer research that I've done with a lot more detail and hard numbers. So if you have questions or if you are concerned about something I forgot to mention, then maybe take a look at the papers and I might have left it out just for time's sake. The papers and sources are available on the heartland.org website. We'll have links to them in the video description. Also, in case you're not already watching us, you should tune in here on Fridays at noon central for Climate Change Roundtable, where myself and some colleagues discuss climate-related topics, and on occasion we get some really cool guest experts. Thanks guys for watching.